Romeo and Juliet, one of Shakespeare's most well-known tragedies, takes place in Verona. The city is depicted as a city of feuding with <coughs> two noble families battling in an ongoing war, Montagues and Capulets. Romeo and Juliet, each descendants of these families, passionately fall in love. This love is to be hidden from their families. They are so desperately in love that they get married secretly. However, before that wedding night, Romeo killed Juliet's cousin, Tybalt, and therefore in the morning he is forced to leave her. If he returns to the city, he will be put to death and Juliet is told to marry Paris, a partner chosen by her parents, who even do not know that she is already married. First, she refuses but then agrees because she has some plans in mind to be with Romeo. Now it is time for Juliet to choose between her family and the mother.
Lady, lady, lady. Allah, Allah, mane gizde, mane gizde. O bele neyde ne uğraymaz bu? Sana kalbim var, mane bu mane gizde. What noise is here? Allah yuttu bu be. Hadi sen açın. Lut, lut, o yuttu. Oh me, oh me, my child, my only life. Revive, look up, or I will die with thee. Tybalt, lie still there in thy blood sheet. 
Oh, what more favor can I do to thee than with that hand that cut thy youth in twain? To Sanda is that was thine enemy. Forgive me, cousin. Ah, oh, dear Juliet, why art thou yet so fair? Shall I believe that unsubstantial death is amorous? And the lean of heart the monster keeps thee here in dark to be his paramour? For fear of that, I still will stay with thee, and never from this palace of dim night depart again. Here, here will I remain with forms that are thy chambermaids. Oh, here will I set up my everlasting rest and shake the yoke of inauspicious stars from this world weird flesh. Eyes. Look your last arms, take your last embrace and lips. Oh, you, the doors of breath, seal with her eyes kiss, a dateless bargain to innocent. Antony and Cleopatra, the clash between Rome and Egypt appears. 
appears as an obstacle for Cleopatra and Antony's law. Antony's Rome is the representative of order and military, while Cleopatra's Egypt represents luxury, fun, disorder. Antony falls in love with Cleopatra, the queen of Egypt, and settles in Alexandria. However, he is compelled to return to Rome when the empire is threatened by the rebellion of Sextus Pompey, the son of Pompey, who had been defeated by Julius Caesar. As his wife has just died, Antony marries Octavius' sister, Octavia, in an attempt to heal the rift between the two emperors. They make peace with Pompey. When Cleopatra hears about Antony's marriage, he, she flies into a jealous rage but knows that Antony does not love Octavia. Caesar is, is, in, is incensed with Antony's behavior and he declares war on both Antony and Cleopatra. When the Romans arrive, Antony is offered a choice of how to fight and despite being, being renowned as the world's greatest soldier, he chooses to fight on sea. The Egyptian navy is in the desert, and when Cleopatra na Cleopatra's navy turns and flees, Antony follows them, and Caesar defeats him. Cleopatra goes to her tomb and sends a message to Antony that she is dead. Antony is devastated and decides to kill himself. He botches the suicide and wounds himself without dying. His followers take him to Cleopatra's tomb, where he dies in her arms. Then let it be, let it be that once. For with a good, 
I must be killed. Throw thy underscore that thou hast borne this most for thy country. Oh, sir, pardon me. When I did make thee free, thwarest thou not thy dream, when I beat thee. Do it at once, or thy present services are all excellence but on purpose. Turn from me then that noble countenance, wherein the worship of the whole world lies. Lordy! My sword is rolled. Then let it work at once. Farewell, creature. It is said, man, and farewell. Farewell. Let me say, my emperor. Shall I strike now? Now, heroes. Thou teachest me what I should and thou dost not. O oh, valiant well, heroes, my queen and heroes have got by their grave destruction upon me a nobleness and record. But I will be a bridegroom in my bed and run into it as the lover's bed. Come then, heroes, thy master, thy thy scholar. To do thus, I learn of thee. I will never go from hence. Be comforted, dear madam. No, I will not. All strange and terrible events are welcome, but comforts be despised. Our size also are proportion to our cause. Must be as great as that which makes it. Not Caesar's valor had overthrown Antony, 
wild, until of many thousand kisses, the poor lost all lay upon thy lips. Are they not dear thee, my lord, are they? Lest I be taken, not the imperious show of the full fortune Caesar shall ever be bruised with me. If knife, drug, serpent, save age, stick or operation, I am safe. And your wife Octavia, with her modest eyes and still conclusion, shall acquire no honor demurring upon me. But come, Antony, come, we must rob thee up. Oh, quick, or I am gone.
Majesta sitting prince, such shaping fantasies that they perhaps. More than who the reason ever comprehends. The lunatic, the lover of the poet, are of imagination or compact. One sees more devils than best I can hold. That is, the made man, the lunatic, all is frantic, sees the lens between a grow of aging, the poet's eye, in fine trans rolling, that the ones from heaven to earth, from earth to heaven. And his imagination by this form, the forms of things are known, the poets plan, toys them to shapes and gives their nothing, a local habitation under them. Such tricks as the strong imagination that, if it but apprehends some joy, it comprehends some bravery of that joy. Or in the night, imagining some fear, how is the bush supposed to be? But all the story of tonight told over, and all day minds found secrets to all together. More reasons than fancy images, but howsoever strange and admirable. Here come joy and her. Come now, what mess, what dances shall be? To wear away this bondage of three hours between our after and the seventh. There's a big promise for her, right? Make 
choice of which your highness will see first. It had his breast in Okyan Kromis, and his love is the very tragical mark. <laughs> Mary and tragical, Teddy is angry that is hot as a mother's trace now. And what are they doing? Play? Hard time of men that were never this year, which never labored in their minds till now, and now have toiled their unrelated memories with the same play against their nuptial. We will hear it. No, my noble lord, it's not for you. I've heard it over, and it's nothing, nothing in the world, unless you can find sports in the intent. I will hear that play, for never anything can be on my single Sunday Sunday. No, my noble lord, it's not for you. I've heard it over, and it's nothing, nothing in the world. Go, bring them, and take your place, ladies. I know not to see riches over charge and duty in the service perishing. Why, gentle sweet, you shall see no such thing. He says there can be nothing in this man. The kind of way to give them thanks for nothing. Our support shall be to take but their mistakes. And what your duty cannot do, noble respects take it in mind, not me. When I have come, great works have purposed to greet me with premeditated lifetimes. Where I have seen them shiver and look pale, make periods in the midst of sentences, throttle their accent in their fear, and in conclusion down the hair broken, not paying them welcome. Trust me, Siri, out of this silence that I picked the welcome, and in the modest of fearful duty, I read as much as from the rattling tongue. Loud, therefore, time to time simplicity, in least to speak most to my capacity. So, please, Your Grace, the prologue is addressed. Let me approach. If you offend, it is with our goodwill that you should think we come not to offend, but with goodwill. To show our simple skill that is the true beginning of our land, and consider that we come but in this fight. We do not come, as I need to content you, our dream like this. All for your delight, we are not here, that you should here repent you. The actors are at hand, and by their show, you shall know all that you like to know. But, but, one more. The truth make all things plain. This man is Pyramus. This man is Pyramus. If you would know, and this beauteous lady Tisby is certain. And this man with lime and rafkes <laughs> doth present wall that why wall which did this flower sunder, and through all's chink, poor souls, <laughs> they are content with this. At which let no man wonder, this man with lantern, dog, and bush of thorn presented moonshine, or if you will know, by moonshine did this flower think no scorn to meet at man's tongue, that there to woo, this grisly beast. Which lion hides by name? The thrust that is be coming first by night, did scare away, or rather did affright, and as she fled, her mantle she did fall. Which lion, wild with bloody mouth, did stain? And then comes Pyramus, sweet youth and tall, and find his trusty Thisbe's mantle slain. What if, with blade, with bloody blameful blade? He bravely broached his boiling bloody breast, and this be tearing in mulberry shade, his dagger drew and died. For all the rest, let lion, wall, and lovers twain at large discourse while here they do remain.
Royal Times Minister to Whistleblower Time to Whisper. Oh, 
relations with the train beliefs, I trust to take off through speed besides. But stay, oh spart, but mark, poor knight, what dreadful loss here? Eyes, do you see? How can it be, oh dear, to that, oh dear? Diamond too good. What? Stay with blood? Oh, approach ye, freeze fell. Oh, fate come, come, cut thread and crown.
So I just didn't want to read it. I remember the last part where Estra uh, told you that this is going to be a Roman burial. So yeah. uh, I sense that things do quite well there. And I find you more Egypt than Roman. Yes. <laughs> so with your uh, everything compared to Nita, I think you look quite more Egypt. Uh, back to Gamze, I learned your performance for Romeo. That was quite nice. I think uh, you did well for male characters. Thank you. Yeah. And it's on my screen. I think uh, that was not as successful as the first two, to tell the truth. So I like it too. If you want to continue from that point onwards, we can continue. I can follow both, both of those. Um, so, uh, did, did you guys investigate criticism of, of I mean, I know you did to some degree because I've read the papers, but um, it seems to me that like, so much of Antony's last scene is built around his speech to Eris. And uh, the thing is that Eris's name makes him basically kind of uh, Antony's final debate with the spirit of love that has overcome and overthrown him. So, um, I think that that... Uh, the con conceiving of Eris as somehow representing Rome um, is kind of mistaken there, because he is he is precisely the spirit of love that has allowed Anthony to give in to Egyptian influences, as it were. Um, and uh, I, I do think that the, the, the delivery of all the the you know the calling out to Eris, 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 you know, like really should have. Like we should have investigated the pronunciation of the name, first of all, so that all the audience members knows that this guy shares the name with the god of love, which I don't think was particularly clear. And, uh, and then, you know, like Anthony's desperate passion should be in all his dialogue lines with Eris. And I, and I did, I found it was, to, uh, I mean, like you've got no problem with dig dignity, as I've said before, right? But, um, uh, um, and you had the dignity of, uh, like, you know, uh, 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 well, uh, a triumvir, right? I mean, he's, you know, uh, one of the three masters of the world. Uh, and that was fine, but uh, as I say, given that his problem, dramatically speaking, is with Eris, um, as most of you uh, that wrote on it, you know, brought out, I think that that should have uh, governed the performance more, and perhaps also the, the critical evaluation. Um, uh, could you uh, say again, though, uh, so what is your understanding of the dynamic? It's in your paper, and it, it's also a main part of your performance. So what, is the, what, is, what do you see as the, the dynamic between Egypt and Rome in that scene? Well, first of all, Anton says in the first scene, in the first line, uh, she had betrayed me the day for Cleopatra, but and at the end, he dies at his at her monument. That means uh, he, is in a way, does not think of his Roman values or Roman duties, but he is following her his duty, uh, his pleasure and passion for Cleopatra. So I thought that he is more than Roman, more than Egypt, rather than Roman. Hmm. And since Jim, that, uh, as one of you mentioned in the papers, there's, there's the question of. Cleopatra said, yeah, well, Cleopatra, I, maybe it was in your paper, it was in your lines, but you sort of say, well, give him a high Roman, you know, thing. So, it, it's almost like, well, I mean, uh, yeah, I think in your paper, I also, it was somebody's paper, I think it was Esros, that there was emphasis upon, upon uh, the switching of roles, yes. where she takes his, his, his arms and things and dresses him like a woman when he's asleep. Yeah. Uh, that was in your paper. Yeah. Uh, can I come back to that? For just, uh, well, okay, let's proceed with that. So, <laughs> um, uh, so did you uh, uh, um, try to uh, apply this sense of, um, as it were, the switching of, well, can we call them national, not really, cultural identities um, into your performance? And in what ways did you do that? Yeah. Um um, I think uh, Cleopatra is the one who um, makes Antony, um, who calls Antony um, being away from his role and uh, his failure, because um, 
normally um, he uh, he is called by Caesar to fight against Pompey, but um, Cleopatra always uh, tries to uh, have power over Antony. And in this case, I think uh, she is the follower of power rather than her love for Antony. I know in your paper you had lots of you know doubts and suspicions about yeah. Cle Cle the nature of Cleopatra's yeah, feelings, but in your playing of it, that seemed like a woman who lost her her best beloved. Um, because uh, she has to be seen like, as if she really loves Anthony to get uh, power. Okay. And so, but in she in the end she does love him, even if she doesn't know it herself earlier, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, okay, uh, can, can we go to Super now for a little bit? Or also? Oh, sorry. <coughs> sorry. Uh, I'm sure you read before this question, but why these three plays? How come you uh, mix and match all these? Because they're, they all three are Shakespearean plays, mm -hmm. and they share the same theme, the death because of uh, misunderstanding of the beloved condition. So we thought we should make a combination of three plays rather than just one play. And also we chose Midsummer Night's Dream um, deliberately because we wanted to show that also, not commonly, but in comedies also this happened and Shakespeare made it for two tragedies. Out of this combination, I thought Anthony and Cleopatra is not particularly at the beginning. Yeah. 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 Idea of the movement, but would you like to uh, explain that more? Because yeah. I don't see anything. I, I agree because in the Elizabethan page, the women are expected to obey what the man says. But as we see, Cleopatra, uh, Anthony doesn't do it, but he takes commands from the I find it funny, I find it because we're using the term Elizabethan and we have this. Queen Elizabeth fear in the whole country, the world, it uh, seems uh, quite contradictory to me. That's why uh, I raised this issue. Uh, and then perhaps another question about the acting. Which one of those roles do uh, you find more challenging? And why did you choose it that way? I found uh, films as more challenging. And why? Because um, this. Um, Character uh, thinks like he's the best actor. <laughs> Actually, he's not. So this um, amateurishness and the um, uh, sorrow of him, uh, this um, combination was really difficult. Yeah, I could do it. All of you were on stage, perhaps you could have recorded your uh, voice or someone could have done it from about. <laughs> we, of, we, yeah, we told us it, but we can't use the sound system, so yeah, that's it's a bit problem. Mm -hmm. So we, we decided to make someone with it. Mm -hmm. so and thank you for that. Oh, by the way, it is close to something close to your play, your act. Just come, just come. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's not going to be graded, so it is a problem. We don't think it's a problem. No, no, it's fine. just the problem, so we thought it's not that important yeah. because also on the stage there are the working class people, mm -hmm. so we should come one of them. Is it another? <laughs> 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 no, I, have to, I took it as 
the character who, who forgot to get into costume just as <laughs> the whole performance is supposed to be rather amateurish. Um, yeah, I mean, I'd like to hear more about, again, which uh, sort of the deepest challenges you found in, in your role that we haven't heard from all of you. Okay, Juliet was really difficult for me because uh, like the psychological condition she is in is really hard to express. But when I went on, I started to think, how can I act? How do? How will I act if I'm in the same condition? So it became easier. But for the guard, it was really hard for me because in the play I only have three lines or something. So I'm not really that much in the play, and it makes it more difficult to come, just interrupt and go out. One other question I had, and again, it's a sort of general one for whoever wants to, to, to pick it up, is, is could you give one example of how performing uh, the plays and, and thinking about performing them has perhaps changed your interpretation of, of the text, even if only slightly, um, or, or given you new insights into the text and the, the relationships between the characters, the characters in themselves? I for Cleopatra, and she says there is nothing left remarkable when I do the simple, and she cries uh, because of Anthony's death. And then um, she says, no more, but a woman is commanded by such problems. And we see that uh, she, cri she cries and we think she really loves him and mourns for him. And then uh, she says, but no more, even a woman is commanded by such problems. She becomes again a passionate woman. It strikes me that, especially with Cleopatra, she's a character who is... I mean, all, all these scenes trouble the idea of sincerity and authenticity. And Cleopatra is the kind of paradigmatic character who is at her most... Uh, again, I don't want to use the word sincere, but at her truest when she's most performing. She always acts. Uh, yeah, with regard to Anthony Cleopatra, one of the things that I was interested in um, I mean, it's not a geriatric passion, but it's definitely a middle-aged one. Um, well, no, this is part of the, like, the, like the complexity of, uh, and the, you know, um, the, the, the intensity for um, interpretation and, uh, you know, measuring the possibilities with regard to Cleopatra doesn't exist with Juliet. Why? She's a kid. She's 15. You're approaching 50. Uh, you've been dealing with men for a while, quite a few different men, you know what they're like, you know how to manipulate them, all these things that uh, came up in your paper. Uh, and similarly, Anthony is not Romeo. Anthony is like, you know, he's, he's been an officer in the fields and been involved in politics for years. He's had lots of, you know, experiences with women and lots of experiences of war and politics. And he's like, yeah, he's got to be 50 anyway at least. Um, <laughs> my age. Right, so I'm wondering, did you consider this at all? Because you did both plays, right? And they're very, very contrasting love affairs. Romeo and Juliet, Anthony and Cleopatra, they're, they're as different as night and day. Why? Generational difference. They're kids, you guys are, you know, in midlife. Did you consider that at all? To be honest, yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> it's not, I decide because Romeo directly decided to kill himself and he thinks that he lost his life and blah blah blah. And he also during the scene he's um, we, we can see that he is not uh, his psychological situation is not fine. He's not sure about <coughs> what he heard or about uh, Juliet's situation. That's yeah you did you played Romeo with with the purity that one finds in the under 20 group. <laughs> no, seriously, I mean, you know, like, once you get a little bit older and you go through a few bad experiences in your life, you know, like, uh, you know, uh, falling lines of passion with such clarity and unswerving purpose is something that you're not good at anymore. Whereas you, you were very good at communicating that, that we were looking at a person who's still capable of that. Like, you can still sort of say, like, look, here's my love, she's dead, so I'm obviously going to be dead too, you know. There's, there's no other way around it. Juliet's the same way. So, you know, it's, it's all cut and dry, crystal clear to them. 
you know, Friar Lawrence, I mean, he's the guy that's, you know, he's a little old enough that he sees doubts and ambiguities and stuff like that. But Romeo and Juliet, no doubt, ever. Whereas uh, in your case, I mean, part of this fluctuation and does she really love him or doesn't she and does she even herself know, all that is like very midlife, it seems to me. And, uh, and also Anthony's, um, you know, Anthony's wrestling with Eris, which has all kinds of ambivalence in it, is, is again, completely un-Romeo, right? Um, but I think there, there was built into your presentation a kind of a nice potential contrast there. Uh, almost as good as, but perhaps not as good as, uh, Dilara's opportunity to do two death scenes. <laughs> right? And uh, I, thought you, I thought you could have maybe done more with the, the Thisbe one, but clearly you were aware of the amusing contrast. And you did, did, did give us that entirely dramatically you know, inappropriate, I mean in terms of the, the, the laborers, you know, that big smile, like, no, I get to kill myself, and then, and then you do it, right? So, and that worked. Um, uh, and that was like a, like a clever kind of uh, bit of symmetry that you built into your, your, your thing. Uh, anyway, sorry, it's, it's me talking. <laughs> uh, sorry. Should we open it up, see if there's anybody? Yeah. Anyone got any questions? Go on. <laughs>
uh, as short as we can. And then I think it's okay. When did you um, think of this bit here? Yeah. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm not calling you a bit, I'm, but you know, <laughs> the thing is, when I went to their rehearsal, Zainab as well, they, um, Esther also did that. She came down and, and then talked to the person who was here. Did they actually tell you to sit here? No. No? Okay. <laughs> it was just fortuitous. Anyway, so uh, when did you come up with that idea? That, that you should, you know, address somebody in one of the front seats and then go on stage. When did that come up? Who came up with that? <laughs> oh, Pat is good. Well, no, it's because I mean, it was one among a number of suggestions. So, but they made the choice to go with them. He's the great breaker of the fourth wall. That's <laughs> he also, and when we did see the deadless, he also said, like, oh, what, what about there, the students? Yeah, I tried to get them to yeah. do that for the. Uh, uh, I, I wanted to have oh. Walter and Theseus as well. Yeah. Uh, okay, well, I'm the one that said, like, don't do the table up there. Yeah, I, I was just going to say as well. I told this way to uh, attract more attention. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's a good idea. Yeah. Uh, I've, I've played this part, uh, <laughs> being moonshine. I think you handled it much better than I did. Um, but I noticed you got rid of the dog and the thorn bush. I mean, yeah. again, one of the problems is you've potentially because got I couldn't hold far too many props. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh -huh. so, <laughs> you have a dog box? Yeah, because I'm good. Um, yeah. Uh, it's one of the difficult one is nurse, because actually she's a funny character. But I couldn't decide whether I should be dramatic or funny, because I couldn't laugh while one is there. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I felt that was something that, you know, maybe I tried to push it too hard on you in, in, in rehearsals. But I think, you know, one of the things I love about Romeo and Juliet and Shakespeare generally is there in Anthony and Cleopatra as well, is the way that you know, the most tragic moments are often intercut with very funny, uh, or potentially very funny, little little scenes or incidents. So I think, I think that applies, you know, that can apply to the nurse as well. That sharpens the tragedy in some cases. Uh, it's like fine. Uh, it, it was the most um, difficult one because uh, he's always speaking and I say just one line. He's always speaking and I say just one line and then I, uh, when I was also on, on the scene, I thought which short line I was going to say. <laughs> it was too hard to memorize because also the other characters all coming to the scene and they all say something and I just comment one, one thing. But Roma, Romeo, um, Romeo was the easiest one because I had just one big part and I'm always speaking by myself. Then I think it was the easiest one. Uh, as I said, uh, it was um, films uh, from the um, performances that I watched on YouTube. Um, they were uh, good, I mean, so I thought that maybe I can do like them. But, you know, uh, there are some um, performances that Firmus was uh, laughing and uh, crying, so um, I couldn't decide um, how I should do that. Um, and also the um, uh, death scene, uh, it was really difficult to um, transform it into a Way. Um, like, I must die, I must die. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, no, I thought, I thought you did really well with that. And, and, it, and it is, for somebody with your kind of personality, playing somebody with <laughs> that kind of personality, it's not easy. Right? Because he's very, very big and very, very buffoonish. And you're, you know, well, you know, he's. he's, he's like a clown. Yeah, exactly. Clownish, buffoonish. He's uh, dopey. Uh, <laughs> and um, uh, and also you're quite modest, and he's very, very full of himself. Right? But you, you clearly had all that stuff. You were aware of all that stuff, and you know, you you did what's called taking your dramatic risks. Right? You know, sort of like, you know, could I really do this? You know, 
this preposterous sort of multi-stab wound death thing. You know, can I really do the thing where his legs jiggle a little bit at the end, you know? And the thing is, you have to. Otherwise, her line dies, right? Because she comments on your comical death. So if it's not comical, then, then, then she gets lost. Um, so, I, 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 you know, that was your best bit. Uh, and, you know, like, um, you're basically the one who, you know, didn't really have so much of a major role. Um, you had a few, like, medium ones, but, yeah. you know, your Pyramus was your biggest one, so that's the one you had to, you had to give your all to. And you did. Thank you. Uh, did you have anything you wanted to add? I know you <laughs> gave no. a kind of answer earlier. Uh, I mean, and for me, what the most difficult part was the injured death of the kid. Because from the beginning, I'm all on my own on the stage. It's really difficult. I don't know. At first, when we were rehearsing, I didn't know where to go, which part, how to do, how to take my hand or anything. Then I decided I should sit in some part of it. And the most difficult part was when I think I see the ghost. So I tried to do my best to make the make the audience look at there. I don't know if it worked, but I worked on that part really hard. You know, I thought that was an interesting choice because it's often played that moment as again Juliet. You know, there's, there's, sometimes there's not a sense that she she's really seeing the ghost. It's it's her imaginings and she's aware that these are her imaginings. But you made it quite literal in that sense. You, she really does see a ghost, uh, which which for me worked. Uh, and I thought you took my advice about hugging your knees more desperately. I thought that worked too. I'm wondering, um, Patrick, should we like can can we do a round of questions? I have to do the paper now. I mean, as or is, is that separate or? I, mean, I think we can we, we can touch. <coughs> we may be running short of time. But. Well, I mean, with six people, I mean, like you know. Just, uh, perhaps we can talk about props and costumes a bit, because we didn't talk about that. Um, I asked this question to, to Shulia, and she just answered uh, she had to make Anthony a little romantic, like in between what to do or where to go. But uh, the rest and the colors, perhaps, Divara, you talked about it in your paper, orange and uh, pink for Juliet's costume. And uh, you decided to work with the pink one. I remember that. No, the orange one was in a performance. It was in a performance, but still, you, you mentioned that uh, in the sense that that turns out to be a more decisive one, or um, putting the kind of stress and emphasis on the character more. But pink is rather um, you tell that so, Yeah, uh, I wrote like pink is more passionate romantic color and in one movie in 1996 there they use the orange cloak but I searched, I also searched for it for uh, orange represents the color of decisiveness mm -hmm. it's not what Juliet is right there mm -hmm. because her psychological condition is not good she's in between her love her family like she doesn't know what to do at all so pink is a more suitable uh, color for mood, I think. Love that. 
I found that interesting as well because it connects with the uh, the Risa theory that Romeo is a sort of first draft of Hamlet in some senses, and it, it makes a sort of connection forward potentially to Hamlet that we saw. So, um, well, as I said at the outset, you know, like having the fun these before, but I guess, um, I mean, since it is a performance piece, then it, like, it, it doesn't have the presentation element, so that's kind of covered. Yeah. And so we've done some Q&A. Do you want to stop the Q&A? Yeah. You're, you're the super. I'm, uh, unfortunately, I have not Oh, right, okay, so, yeah. yeah. But, I mean, I, I think if you have any questions about the papers, I think, Probably is. Should we say no yeah, for us to take that out. Out. Okay. Yeah. So we should, so we should do the exits. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So what we did last time is we exited. Oh, okay. A lot of people in this room, they're all in costume. Right. Yeah. yeah. So should we head back to the department? Yeah. Hold no, our discussions and leave you to. Well, uh, I really <coughs> wanted to get a picture of them though. Can you do that? Can you guys go ahead and I'll, I'll actually use my distance running skills and catch up with you? And I want copies of any pictures, please. Yeah, well, you know, they always go on Facebook. Yeah. Well, well, actually, I'm not on Facebook, though. My no. Okay. <laughs> okay, so. Thank you. Why, uh, can